Today we're going to be building a modular player character for a 2D platformer in Godot 4. This tutorial will be split up into two parts. The first part will be setting up simple movement, jumping and animations in a modular way. The next part of the tutorial will handle more advanced topics like acceleration and deceleration, coyote time, buffer jumping and variable jump height. Before we begin, let's run through some important settings that I use in this project. Make sure to enable advanced settings in the top right because some settings are hidden. First, we're going to enable Snap 2D Transforms to Pixel. This makes it so our transform is always snapping to each pixel. This is necessary if you're using a pixel art aesthetic. If we don't enable this, the pixels could get stretched or squashed, as you can see here on the left. Next up is Default Texture Filter, set that to Nearest. This setting is needed for crisp pixel art, otherwise it will try to blend the pixels and the art will appear washed out, like you see here on the left. Then we're going to set the viewport width and height. Here we set the viewport to 320 by 180. Always make sure to set the viewport to a resolution that multiplied by a whole number is 1920 by 1080. That's one of the most common screen resolutions out there. 320 by 180 is an ideal size because multiplied by 4, it's 1280 by 720. If we multiply it by 6, it's 1920 by 1080. If we multiply it by 8, it's 2560 by 1440, which is 1440p. And if we multiply it by 12, we get to 4K. Lastly, let's make sure that the stretch mode is set to viewport, which is recommended for pixel art. And let's also set the window width height to 1280 by 720. If we don't do this, our window will be 320 by 180 and it will be too small to see. I've already set up a scene for the game with a tile map for the level. I'm using the Sunnyland asset pack from Anzimus, which will be linked in the description below. Nothing crazy, just a game node with a world node that contains our level. I've also added a small script to the game node, which you can see here. This makes it so when we press escape, it will quit the game. It will speed up our testing by not having to click the X every time. Let's get started. First, create a player scene. We'll be using a character body 2D to inherit from. Call it player. Next, let's add a animated sprite 2D because we're going to be using animations for our player. Add sprite frames in the inspector on the right and then click on it to have it show on the bottom of the screen. Let's start with an idle animation. Rename default to idle. Drag in the idle frames from the assets folder. And then we can click play to see a preview of the animation. Time to add a collision to our player. Add a collision shape 2D. And then in the inspector, select a capsule shape for its shape. We want a round bottom because we have slopes in our level that we want to traverse. If we have a rectangle as a collision, it might get stuck on the slopes. Now the capsule and the sprite aren't aligned yet, so let's fix that. I'm going to keep the collision shape in the middle and move the sprite. It's always better to move the visual part of the player instead of the collision. You want to keep the collision in the middle as much as possible. Collision shape, we're gonna set the radius to 8 and the height to 20. Okay, let's move the sprite a little bit up and slightly to the left. Select the game scene. Let's add the player to the world. Let's grab the player and drag it onto the world node. And let's move the player to the middle of the scene. When we run the game, you can see that we don't have any gravity yet. We're also not seeing our idle animation play. Let's first add some gravity so we can see if our collision shape is the correct size and position. Let's create a gravity component scene. We can add this component to other characters if needed, so let's make it as generic as possible. First we'll add a new folder to scenes called components. In here we'll create a new scene. We'll inherit from node because we don't need it to have any transforms. Call this gravity underscore component. And let's attach a script to this node. The script has the same name as the scene. Let's jump into the code. 
give this script a class name called gravity components so that we can use it in other scripts. We'll also add a export variable called gravity so that we can set it in the editor if needed. I like adding variables under a export subgroup because it will create a category that I can expand or collapse. Let's add a function for handling the gravity. Here we're checking if the body is not on the ground, so it must be in the air. If it's in the air, we add gravity to the body. Since we're adding to our current velocity, we have to multiply by delta time. Just be advised that in Godot, a positive y value is down and a negative y value is up. On the last line, we set the variable is falling to true or false depending on the y velocity. So if the y velocity is bigger than zero and we are in the air, then we know that we're falling. Add the gravity component to the player. Right click the player and then click instantiate child scene and select the component. Let's add a script to the player to call the handle gravity function. I'm putting the player script into the scripts folder, but you can also put it in the scenes folder if you want. First, we'll add the gravity component as an export. Why do we add it as an export? Can't we just use on ready? Yes, that's possible too, but when you rename or move that node, it will break that piece of code. If you use export, it will automatically rename or update the path when you change it. Next, let's call the handle gravity function in the physics process of the player. We're adding the player as parameter by using self because the player is a character body 2D. After calling handle gravity, we need to call move and slide. This is a function from character body 2D that handles the actual moving for us. We only have to adjust the velocity and move and slide will handle the rest. Don't forget to assign the gravity component to the player. And let's run the game and see if the gravity is working. Looks like it's working. Now gravity is nice, but we want to be able to move as well. Before we're able to move, we need to check which buttons are pressed. So let's add some input actions to the project settings. Go to project, project settings, input map. Add a new action called move left. Add another one called move right. And let's add jump as well. Let's assign move left to A, move right to D, and jump to spacebar. Now for the input, we're going to create another component which will handle that for us. Let's create a scene, call it input component. We'll inherit again from node and attach a script. Let's look at the code. The code is fairly simple. We're just pulling the pressing of move left and move right every frame and save that value in the input horizontal variable. Input horizontal will be minus one if we move left and one if we move to the right. Not moving at all means it will be zero. We've also added a check for the jump input, but that will be used later when we make a jump component. Let's add this input component to the player. Time for some actual movement. Let's create a scene for a movement component. Same deal again, inherit from node. And attach a script. Let's go to the code. As you can see, this looks pretty simple. We're setting the body x velocity to the direction times the speed. So if the direction is left, which is minus one, the x velocity will be minus 100. Going right, it's gonna be 100 because it's one times 100. If we're standing still, the direction is zero. So our x velocity will be zero times 100, which will be zero. We are only changing the x velocity, which is why we call the function handle horizontal movement. Our y velocity will be adjusted by the gravity and jump component. Let's add the movement component to the player. And open the player script. First, add our input component and movement component to the export variables. Then, let's call the handle horizontal movement function of our movement component, which we'll call in our physics process function. As parameters, we'll add the player again and the horizontal direction of our input component. After that, don't forget to assign the input component and movement component to the player. 
Let's run the game and see if we're able to move left and right by pressing the A and D buttons. Yep, looks like it's working. Now that the movement is working, it's time to start working on the animations. Let's go to the player and click on the animated sprite. On the bottom of the screen, we're going to add a couple more animations. First, we'll add the run animation. So click on add new animation, name it run. Then drag all six frames into the window. We'll also add the jumping and falling animation while we are here. So add new animation. Name it jump and drag only player jump onepng into the window. Then add the last animation, name it fall, and only drag player jump two.png into the window. These are all the animations that we need. Let's create the animation component scene. Again, inherit from node. and attach a script. Here's the code for the animation component. First, we'll add an export for the animated Sprite 2D, which we'll use to play the animations. Next is a function that handles flipping the sprite in the direction that we are moving. If we're not moving, we don't do any flipping. So the sprite keeps looking in the last direction it was moving in. The sprite flipping itself is using a ternary if statement. The sprite flip variable gets set to false when the move direction is more than zero, which means we're moving right. Otherwise, we set the flip variable to true, which means we're moving to the left. Let's add another function that will handle the idle and run animation. We'll call this handle move animation. We'll also add a parameter that gives the direction that we're moving. In this function, we'll add a call to our handle horizontal flip function so that the sprite will be facing the correct way. Then we'll check if we're moving at all. If so, we play the run animation. Otherwise, we'll play the idle animation. Now we go to the player and add this component. After that, assign the sprite node on the animation component. Let's go into the player script and add the animation component as export. Then we'll do a call to the handle move animation function in the physics process. As parameter, we give the input direction. Afterwards, click on the player and assign the animation component in the inspector. Let's run the game and see if our animations are working. The sprite is flipping correctly and it's also playing the right animations. It's time to add some jumping to our character. Let's create a jump component scene. You guessed it, we're inheriting from node again. And let's also attach a script to this component. Let's jump into the code. We create a export variable for the jump velocity so we can set it in the editor. Next is the meat of our jump component. Here's our handle jump function. If we want to jump and our character is on the floor, we set the y velocity to our jump velocity. Our jump velocity is negative because up on the y axis is negative in Godot. The last line is a variable which we use to check if we're jumping at the moment. We will use this later for our animations. It's important to check if the velocity is going up and to check if we are in the air. If we only check for velocity, this variable will be set to true if we're riding a moving platform up, for instance. Now let's add this component to the player. In the player script, we have to add a couple of things. First, let's add an export variable for the jump component. After that, we have to call the handle jump function in our player's physics process function. Back in Godot, click on player and assign the jump component to the player node. Let's run the game and see if we can jump now. Looks like jumping is working, but our animations still need some work. Let's work on that now. Let's go into our animation component script and add this function. If we are jumping, play the jump animation. If we are falling, play the fall animation. If both are false, then do nothing. Let's jump back into our player script and let's add the handle jump animation function. Let's run the game again. 
Looks like the animations for jumping are working as well now. And even if we fall from a ledge, it works. In this example, we're using a very simple way to animate. But if you get more complicated with more animations, then you might want to look into state machines. And there you have it, our modular player character. Each module has its own responsibility and the player character only calls the things it needs from them. These components can be reused for other character bodies. Let's say you have an enemy on the ground that you want to move and animate. First we'll add the gravity component. Then we add a movement component. The enemy has no input component, so it has to think for itself which way it wants to go. The movement component only needs a direction. Lastly, we'll add a animation component. This way you can build your characters like Legos. No need to have complicated inheritance or inherit from something that has more functionality than you need. In the next tutorial we'll be adding acceleration and deceleration to our movement. We'll add coyote time, buffer jumping and variable jump heights to our jump. I hope that you liked this video. See you next time.